Hunter Biden has just been found guilty on all He's three the of the counts against it. I've got to say, I've been crying my eyes out all morning because they've got our boy, Hunter. He's been found guilty on all three counts. And look, Joe Biden has truly gone too far this time because this is obviously politically motivated. It's a political witch hunt. And Joe Biden is without a doubt weaponizing the Justice Department against his own son. And this is so unfair. It has to be stopped. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic. I couldn't care less about this. In fact, most Americans don't seem to care about this. And we'll look at public opinion polls that kind of confirm that. But even liberals are just like, eh. And I'm surprised by the response from Republicans because I expected them to be like, well, see, you don't like it when we go after Democrats, so maybe you shouldn't go after Republicans. But they're not even going with that line. Like, they're not taking this as a dub. They're basically saying, no, 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 this is further evidence that Biden is weaponizing the Justice Department and the justice system against his own political opponents, which is extremely stupid and weird so there's a lot to talk about there's a lot of conspiracy theories from republicans that i want to unpack because it's just so dumb but i think that the main takeaway first and foremost is that most americans just don't really care i couldn't care less about this story you could chuck hunter biden into a fucking volcano and i still wouldn't care in fact i would struggle to get past the headline because i would lose interest after about five or six words in and i don't think i'm alone because again polls demonstrate that most americans kind of feel the same way the only way i think that you'd actually get me to care about a story like this is if republicans reacted in a way that was funny or stupid and uh we're making a video on this, so spoiler alert, that's exactly how the fuck they acted. Uh, they did not disappoint, but you know, right off the bat, let me just say that even though I don't have much interest in this story, I support the charges and the result against Hunter Biden because rich people and family members of powerful politicians shouldn't get a pass because of who they are. And Hunter Biden clearly thought that he'd never be held accountable for his actions since he won the Lucky Sperm Club and happened to be, uh, you know, the son of a president, but thankfully the chickens have come home to roost for him. And whenever that happens, you love to see it. But I do want to give you a brief rundown before we get to the reaction, uh, just so you know the specifics of this case in case you haven't been paying attention like most Americans. So Politico reports, quote, the gun related charges spawned from Biden's purchase of a Colt revolver at a Wilmington gun shop in October of 2018. At the time, prosecutors said Biden was in the throes of addiction to crack cocaine. Prosecutors alleged that he signed paperwork at the time of the purchase, falsely claiming he did not use illegal drugs. It is illegal for drug users to possess guns, and it is illegal to lie on gun purchasing forms. Prosecutors said Biden possessed the gun for 11 days before his brother's widow, Hallie Biden, found it and threw it in a trash can outside a high-end grocery store. A man who scavenges through trash cans for recyclables then found the gun and later provided it to police. So he illegally bought a gun, got snitched on, and that's how he finds himself in this predicament today. Now, the jury reached a guilty verdict after just three hours of deliberation. So I think that's pretty telling. Now, whether or not he's going to appeal, that's still up in the air, but my guess would be that he will appeal this. Now, I will say that it is interesting that they got him on gun charges considering how lax America's gun laws are, but he managed to find a way to break the law in that regard somehow. And now he faces a maximum of 25 years in prison as a result. But I'm assuming that the judge isn't going to throw the book at him in this case since it's his first time doing something like this, being convicted of this level of crime. But that's not to say that he won't face time in prison because it does depend on how another case goes. Because Politico continues, quote, Biden also faces federal criminal charges for allegedly failing to pay more than $1.4 in taxes on time. A trial in that case is scheduled to begin in September in Los Angeles. Special counsel David Weiss brought both the gun case and the tax case after years of investigating the president's son. So it's plausible that he actually faces jail time because if he's convicted in that case, then it won't be his first offense. Therefore, the judge might not necessarily feel as inclined to go easy on him. And that's assuming that the judge goes easy on him in this case as well. So he might actually be fucked. And to that I say, boo-hoo. 
I want to be clear. Uh, I am very much still a defund the police, abolish the system kind of a guy. But I do make an exception when it comes to powerful people and millionaires and billionaires. When it comes to them being convicted of crimes, I transform into 1992 Bill Clinton and I get tough on crime and I want to throw the book at them. And that's because for far too long, wealthy and powerful people have been able to break the laws with impunity and they're never subjected to the same penalties that normal people are subjected to because we do have a two-tier justice system with two completely different standards for rich people and poor people. Now, when conservatives say that we have a two-tier justice system, they don't mean that, right? They've co-opted that term to say that there's a different standard with the way that Democrats and Republicans are treated. But rest assured that Republicans, much like Democrats who break the law, they rarely ever get prosecuted. When we see them face penalties for their crimes, that's really an anomaly, right? So when I actually do see wealthy and powerful people get their comeuppance, I'm sorry, but I can't not celebrate. Like, I can't help myself. It's, it's just automatic. Uh, I want to be happy about that, and I am. I'm sorry. Hunter Biden, fuck him. He's not above the law, and neither is Donald Trump. So until we no longer have a punitive system where poor people are locked up for petty theft and drug charges, I'm not going to be mad when the system that these elites imposed on all of us comes back to bite them in the ass, too. Fuck him. That's what I've got to say about it. But with that being said, President Biden did react to this news, and what he said kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I'll explain why after we hear what he said. So HuffPost reports, quote, as I said last week, I am the president, but I am also a dad. Jill and I love our son, and we are so proud of the man he is today. President Biden said in a statement, so many families who have had loved ones battle addiction understand the feeling of pride seeing someone you love come out the other side and be so strong and resilient in recovery. As I also said last week, I will accept the outcome of this case and will continue to respect the judicial process as Hunter considers an appeal he went on. The president said last week that he would not consider using his presidential pardon power on his son, but so far he has not disclosed whether he has ruled out commuting the sentence, whatever it may be. So I'm glad that he's making it clear that he won't pardon his son, but if he commutes the sentence, then that would genuinely be fucked up. Because again, his son is not above the law. So respecting the judicial process also means subjecting him to the same penalties everyone else is subjected to. Now, if he's going to commute his son and then commute every other nonviolent offender, okay, I'll make an exception for that. That's fine. But if you just make an exception for your son, that is fucked up right there. But, you know, there's two reasons why that comment from him rubbed me the wrong way. First and foremost, the empathy that he's expressing towards his son is normal, right? It's what any dad would say in this predicament. That's a good father. But his son is getting empathy that normal people don't get. And I say this because Joe Biden is the architect of the crime bill, which exacerbated our mass incarceration problem. So that empathy that he's showing to Hunter Biden, it's a normal reaction, sure, but as president, you know, it's just sad that he couldn't see that same humanity in all of the people that he's responsible for locking up with his law. He took a punitive approach for poor people, but yet when it comes to his son, he feels compassion and, you know, realizes that he became addicted after going through a difficult time. And, you know, sometimes you just fall into a rut and things happen. It's just unfortunate, I guess, that he didn't extend that same sympathy and humanity to all of the poor people locked up as a result of his crime bill. But the second reason why his comment rubbed me the wrong way was because he talked about respecting the judicial process. Now, I think it's good for him to say that it's necessary considering Trump's cries of witch hunt and claims about the weaponization of the justice system, but it's a fucking lie. Sure, Biden might respect the judicial process domestically, but he went full Trump just a couple of weeks ago when the ICC announced that it was applying for arrest warrants for Benjamin Netanyahu and Yoav Gallant. In fact, Biden initially considered joining Republicans to sanction the International Criminal Court in response to the application of those arrest warrants. Now, I'm glad that he reversed course, but let's not pretend like he respects the rule of law, because when it comes to international law, he's letting Israel get away with murder, literally. So this response, it just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. But with that being said, I do want to shift gears and focus on the response from right wingers because, you know, you would think that they'd be celebrating at least a little bit after vowing retru retribution, especially for Trump's conviction. But instead, in response to this news, they're coping and seething, which doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, take a fucking win if you get a win, right? Someone who you hate and have hated for years is being held responsible for crimes that they've committed. And yet you're just like, 
concocting dumbass conspiracy theories and finding a way to be mad about this somehow. Let me show you what I mean. So Marjorie Taylor Greene tweets, the biggest crimes of the Biden crime family remain untouched. Millions of dollars from foreign influence peddling into Joe Biden's bank account. Now, she's saying this about Ukraine, but like, doesn't she take money from the Israel lobby? So that's kind of ironic. Hunter Biden just became the deep state's sacrificial lamb to show that justice is balanced while the other Biden crimes remain ignored. Oh, OK. Charlie Kirk chimed in saying Hunter Biden guilty. Yawn. The true crimes of the Biden crime family remain untouched. They're like NPCs repeating the same shit. This is a fake trial trying to make the justice system appear balanced. Don't fall for it. I guess they got their talking points from the same uh, factory. I don't even know. Stephen Miller says the gun charges are a giant misdirection, an easy op for DOJ to sell to a pliant media that is all too willing to be duped. Don't be gaslit. This is all about protecting Joe Biden and only Joe Biden. He's protecting himself by throwing his son under a bus. Give me a break. Trump Jr. retweeted Greg Price, who argues Hunter Biden being convicted of a firearms charge is the ultimate red herring of red herrings. The DOJ allowed the statute of limitations to expire on his most serious tax charge buried evidence of the Biden's foreign bribery allegations. And last but not least, we have Matt Gates, who says the Hunter Biden gun conviction is kind of dumb, to be honest. Now, I honestly don't know if Matt Gates is saying that because he agrees with the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Charlie Kirk that Biden is indeed weaponizing the Justice Department to go after his own son to prove how fair the system is, or because he believes in gun anarchy and doesn't think that any charges related to the position of firearms is legitimate. I don't know. But if you look at the comments and the replies specifically from his followers, it seems like they agree with the former rather than the latter. They think that, yeah, this is all just kind of a ruse to get us to believe that the system is fair because Biden used his son as a sacrificial lamb. It's genuinely stupid, uh, even for Republicans. Like, I didn't necessarily expect them to have a reasonable take in response to this news. But honestly, I'm I guess a little bit shocked that they got this stupid, right? Think about what they're saying here. Biden is subjecting his own son to potential prison time all to maintain the facade that the system is still fair, right? And it's not unfair to Donald Trump. He's doing this to send a message to Republicans who are never going to believe anything that Biden says or does. I just don't understand why they're going with this. I'm actually shocked that this is the line of logic that they're going with. You don't have to form a conspiracy theory around everything. You could just say, hey, well, I wish that they got him on more serious charges, but I'll, I'll take what I can get. You can just have that response and then shut the fuck up and move on. See, what they're doing here is I think a little bit of projection because they think Biden is weaponizing the Justice Department to go after political opponents because that's what Trump says. But think about it. Conservatives believe in Project 2025, and part of Project 2025 entails that agencies like the Justice Department, for example, are no longer independent. That's what Trump literally says he wants to do, and they support that. But currently, these agencies actually do have bureaucratic autonomy, and they're not subjected to the direct control of the president, which is good. But they're saying, no, we should change that and allow the president to have control of the Justice Department so he can pursue political opponents. I mean, if you think that that's bad, maybe you should be against the president doing that. You should be against Trump taking control of the Department of Justice and other agencies, because guess what? If a Democrat takes power, then they can do what you're alleging is the worst thing ever. But I mean, that thinking is a little bit too logical for conservatives. They're not they're not thinking about the ramifications, you know, 10 years down the line. They're just thinking I don't like Hunter Biden and uh, we want to go after our political opponents. And since we've agreed that they're doing that already, fuck it. We're, we're just going to go full scale ahead on weaponizing the Justice Department. And if we accuse Democrats of doing it first, then we have an excuse when we actually do it. I mean, they're so transparent, but there's another element here that I think is important. And this is something that Kyle Kalinske talks about all the time. It's a fantastic point. He talks about this inherent contradiction from Republicans, because on one hand, they'll portray Biden as this senile, weak and ineffectual president. But at the same time, he's this cold, calculating, manipulative mafia man who's orchestrating electoral theft on a national scale and weaponizing our entire legal system against his political opponents. But I mean, you kind of have to pick one, right? Either he's a demented old fool or he's a conniving mastermind. Which is it? So credit to Kyle Kalinske for that point because it's a great point. And I don't think that they understand 
why they're not persuasive to normal Americans. But, you know, here's the thing. I do think that Republicans are reacting this way in part because they just don't feel inclined to celebrate as we celebrated when Trump was convicted, because I don't think they actually care as much about Hunter Biden as they say they do. Nobody does, because Hunter Biden doesn't actually have any political power. He may use his proximity to power to corruptly benefit himself, but he doesn't actually hold any power and has no control over public policy. And since that's the case, this is ultimately all inconsequential. What happens to Hunter Biden has no effect on America. And apparently most people don't give a shit about these cases, nor do they think that Biden is culpable in these cases, which is what Republicans are trying to insinuate, because there's no evidence to validate that claim. So I do want to share a breakdown from CNN's Harry Enten of public perception and interest in these cases, because it's going to confirm what we're all thinking. Hunter Biden's legal troubles and Joe Biden. Hunter, Hunter's troubles are related to Joe. 46 percent unrelated to Joe. Correct. Unrelated to Joe. Thank you. 46% say that is believable, that they are unrelated to Joe. That is the plurality believe it is unrelated to Joe Biden. Just 37% of Americans believe that is not believable. That's a good number for Joe Biden. How about this? Joe Biden is a good dad by supporting his son. The clear majority, 54%, say that that is believable. And this is, I think, the polling that Joe Biden is sort of in intuitively is listening to, saying, you know what? First off, I don't necessarily care about the public, but secondly, I think the public thinks I'd be a pretty good dad by supporting his son. Yeah, he may not be looking at the polling all at all when it comes to his public statements about this trial or his son. He may just be a dad. Yeah. Be a dad. What is the potential impact on the election? Yeah, very probably not much at all, because the clear majority of folks believe that Hunter Biden's illegal troubles, show they have no impact on their vote. Yes, there's this 23% who say they're less likely to vote for Joe Biden, but you know who those 23% are? They're Republicans who weren't gonna vote for Joe Biden anyway. And then there are 4%. There are, there are four who say it's more likely to vote for Joe Biden, but you can get 4% of Americans to basically say Hard to see the logic there, all right. In other words, womp womp. And you know, I really don't know what Republicans expected because Hunter Biden is not the president, Joe Biden is. So this story doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But if Republicans aren't gonna take the dub here, I'll take the win. Because anytime the child of a president is subjected to the same punishment that a poor person would be subjected to, I think that's a good thing, right? I'll take that as a victory. But I will say, please do Trump's kids next because where there's smoke, there's fire and they're just as corrupt, if not more so. So anytime we go after the elite and the powerful, that's a win for me. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing, thing. you're getting nervous, man, man.